Hey brothers and sisters, God bless each and every single one of you. It's Hunter's Point here with another video. Uh, this will in fact be your world news update for the 16th of June 2020. I know I had done a live stream just a little bit ago, but I just don't feel that it went as good as it could have. Um, and, you know, there's some buffering issues on my end with the internet that I have. I just don't feel like it was the best video I could have made. So I went ahead and deleted the live stream, and I'm remaking it right now as you're seeing it. Um, it's not going to be the exact same news that I did in the article. Um, you know, just so those of you who did see it won't have to hear the same things over and over. But I did include a couple of the articles, which was the uh, situation going on in uh, West Virginia. Uh, and then I did include an earthquake that happened. Uh, so those of you who already saw the live stream, you'll know about those two pieces. And then I, I went ahead and, and, and uh, chose two other articles that I hadn't reported on. So this will be four articles. Uh, again, if you saw the live stream before I deleted it, two of these four articles will contain news that you've already heard. Um, you know, these other two are legit brand new articles I haven't reported on yet. So I'm going to get right into the first article. Again, your, this is your world news update for the 16th of June, 2020. West Virginia is experiencing a surge of coronavirus outbreaks, particularly within churches. So I'm scrolling down here again off of endtimeheadlines.org. All four of these articles, once again, are off my go-to site. Less than a month after President Trump has urged churches to reopen, West Virginia has reported a significant number of coronavirus outbreaks linked particularly to houses of worship. According to the state's public health office, a total of five churches have seen outbreaks. Those churches are scattered across the rugged mountainous state. The affected churches are in Jefferson County on the border with Maryland, Boone County in the state's southwestern coal fields not too far from the Kentucky border, Hampshire County, also near the Maryland border, and Marshall County in a, in a narrow swath of, of land right, right in between Ohio and Pennsylvania, and it seems to be known as the Northern Panhandle. I apologize for the glare, by the way. Yeah, I have a few blinds that are broken, so if there's like too bad of a glare, I'm, I can't help it. I'm sorry about that. The state's Department of Health and Human Resources have announced the five-church outbreak in a Saturday press release about a house of worship in Greenbrier County where it said at least 17 cases have been identified. It did not name the Greenbrier Church or the churches in the other four counties to protect, quote, the possibility of identifying individuals. So basically they, they want to protect people who may have ended up testing positive. They want to protect their names from getting out there. On Monday, health officials have said that there had been eight church-related cases in Hampshire County, seven in Boone County, five each in Jefferson and Marshall Counties. Speaking at a press conference on Monday, West Virginia Governor Jim Justice revealed that the outbreak in Greenbrier County was at Greystone Baptist Church in Lewisburg. Uh, and he said that the number of cases there had risen to 28. So West Virginia dealing with a brand new coronavirus outbreak within their homes of worship. So that's what's going on there within the states. Developing right now, once again, off of endtimeheadlines.org, second wave of coronavirus has struck China. Residents have seemed to have been rounded up as a result. Apocalyptic scenes are once again unfolding, unfolding in the streets of Beijing after a second wave of coronavirus is being reported, and Chinese residents are being rounded up for quarantine, according to a report from The Mirror. In a recent footage that was captured in Zinfadi, large crowds formed in the streets as officials in hazmat suits had directed them into, bus into buses using megaphones. The new outbreak is being traced to the sprawling Zinfadi Wholesale Food Center in the southwest of Beijing. If you remember, I had just done an update talking about a seafood market, I believe, in Beijing that is the source of a brand new COVID-19 uh, strand. I mean, it's the same novel coronavirus, it's the same COVID-19, but it's like a brand new outbreak and they found it at the seafood market. So now it's kind of blended into other whole food markets within Beijing and just like that, you have another outbreak going on in China. According to the report, seven hotels uh, have been dedicated to the quarantine efforts in a bid to stop further spread of the virus. Beijing has banned high-risk individuals from leaving the city and has halted some transport services today to stop the spread of a, of a fresh outbreak of the coronavirus to other cities and provinces within China. Third article, the Supreme Court in a landmark ruling has ruled in favor of homosexual and transgender workers. And this is as of the 15th of June, once again off of endtimeheadlines.org. 
The Supreme Court ruled on Monday that a landmark civil rights law protects gay, lesbian, and transgender people from discrimination in employment. This is a resounding victory for the LGBT community, uh, and, and this is from a conservative court. The court decided by a 6-3 to three vote that a key provision of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, known as Title, I believe that's uh, 7? Title seven that bar. See, I'm not the best with Roman numerals, but I yeah, V I I. I believe that's seven. Correct me if I'm wrong. That bars job discrimination because of sex, among other reasons, encompasses, encompasses bias against LGBT workers. This is a quote from Justice Neil Gorsuch, an employer who fires an individual for being homosexual or transgender, fires that person for traits or actions that it would not have questioned in members of a different sex. And this is what that justice wrote for the courts. Quote, sex plays a necessary and undistinguishable role in the decision. Exactly what Title VII forbids. And this is another quote um, from, I believe, another, might have been another justice, not too sure here. The court tries to, quote, convince readers that it is merely enforcing the terms of the statute, but that is preposterous. Even as understood today, the concept of discrimination because of sex is different from discrimination because of sexual orientation or, den or gender identity. Uh, Justice Kavanaugh wrote in a separate dissent that the court was rewriting the law to include gender identity and sexual orientation, a job that belongs to Congress. I can agree with that. But still, Kavanaugh has said that the decision represents an important victory achieved today by gay and lesbian Americans. So that was a landmark ruling that occurred yesterday by our Supreme Court. Uh, that is the third article. Now the fourth and final article, a strong and shallow magnitude 5.9 earthquake strikes Turkey, leaving at least one dead and numerous injured. I apologize if I sound like nasally or anything. The allergies are just kicking into full gear right now. A strong and shallow magnitude 5.9 earthquake has struck eastern Turkey's Bengal province, killing at least one person and injuring two others after two observation towers reportedly collapsed. The report went further to state that seven others were rescued from the wreckage, according to the Daily Sabah. There has been a report of 18 people who were injured, but no one critical, so thank God for that as well as 10 houses that were damaged in the El Mali and Dinarbi villages of the Yizdu uh, district. Locals stated that the tremor reportedly lasted anywhere from 8 to 10 seconds. I know a 5.9 might not sound like the most serious of earthquakes in terms of magnitude, but it was a relatively shallow quake and it did do damage and did cause some people to die within Turkey. And personally for me, any earthquake that's a 5.0 or higher is for sure worth watching because it can cause damage if it's shallow enough and if it occurs in you know more heavily populated areas. Uh, any earthquake above a 6.5 is definitely worth paying attention to because they could get really bad once again if they hit heavily populated areas. That is a recipe for disaster. So that was a magnitude 5.9 that has struck eastern Turkey. So that is your little four-article world news update. I want to read from Matthew 24 again. Why not, right? Because it seems like every day these scriptures are being fulfilled. Dual fulfillment. Matthew 24, verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. That's Matthew 25, or excuse me, Matthew 24, verse 5 through 8, rather. Now we'll go into Luke chapter 21, which is another uh, very famous chapter that we like to read here in these end times. Because, again, constant fulfillment, right? Prophecies just jumping, leaping, if you will, off the pages of the Bible. Luke 21, we'll read verses 25 through 28, the classic verses. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads. For your redemption draweth nigh. Brothers and sisters, we're about to get out of here. Right? We are about to go home. We continue to see these events unfold on a daily, at this point almost an hourly basis. Right, The rapture of the church is imminent, and tribulation is coming, the likes of which this world has never seen before and will never see again. That's why it's imperative that if you have not believed on Christ, that you please consider doing so. 
right? It's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life is that of your eternal life. Amen. The Gospels, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, and I'm going to read it here. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and then he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel, the good news, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. If you believe that gospel genuinely in your heart, you are saved, okay? You are indwelt with the Holy Spirit, whereby you are sealed with it unto the day of redemption, Ephesians 4, 30. I'm also going to read Ephesians 1, verse 13 and 14. Uh, in whom you also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, which is the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Right, You are sealed with the Holy Spirit the nanosecond that you are believed in, you are saved. Those three verses, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, and then Ephesians 4, 30, those three verses alone prove eternal security, right? Yesterday, I mean, numerous people were trying to come against the gospel of grace, right? The one true gospel of grace and the doctrine of eternal security. It's honestly sad how many people are just dead set on railing against truth. But that ain't gonna stop me. I'm on here and I'm gonna continue to preach and teach the truth. Uh, because it's imperative that those who are watching this who have not believed on Christ that they do so. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Um, whoever believes on Christ has eternal life. It, it really is that simple. There's no amount of good works that we can ever do to you know, earn our way into heaven. Heaven cannot be worked for, cannot be bought right? Cannot be bargained for. Heaven comes with salvation and salvation is a free gift, a one-time event given to all those who have believed on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in their heart. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Please believe on Christ if you haven't. I mean, I, I there's no way I can really make it any more urgent, right? With everything going on, uh, you, you, you just you have to make sure that you have your affairs in order. And what I mean by that is you have to make a decision, right? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. That's a summarization of Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And that's the equivalent of you accepting the free gift of salvation. Or you can choose to not believe on Christ, rail against him, and that's your that's the equivalent of you rejecting that free gift of salvation. Please don't reject it. Right? It's not the will of the Father that anyone goes to hell, but that all come to a state of repentance, which is that change of mind, change of heart, from not believing to believing. The Greek word for that is metanoia. So please, I implore you, believe on Christ if you haven't, because time is of the essence. So I will see you in the next video, should the Lord tarry. Otherwise, God bless you all.